universal experience across Everybody. the board yeah. is that they put it off and they get whatever whatever anyone might be hoping for this level of skill or something like that and none of them once they've hit that level are like now i'm going to start no, the thing and i'm yeah. so glad i waited right. no all of them yeah they hit that level and the universal experience is they realize it wasn't about that and then they look back at the years that they didn't do the thing they wanted to be doing and they're like i fucking wasted my time yeah what the hell was i doing right it is across the board they wish they had started it five years ago yeah. they wish they had it could be anything but to bring it to brass tacks it's like you want to be a comic book you want to make a comic book everybody who waits well i got it i need i convert i oh the arrogance i can project eight years out i'll be good enough to do the comic book the way yeah. that i want it's like even if you hit the level it's never on time it'll be 12 years out yeah. then they look back and they're like, i should have started my fucking comic 12 years ago what yeah. did i think no one cares how good i am at drawing fingernails like yeah. not a person right. cares i should have been making the thing right yeah. that is the universal experience so it, yeah. it's it, it can be hard to believe when you're starting out, but definitely, it just... Well, I appreciate you doing this, man. It's super cool of you. My pleasure. Always um, happy to talk with you. Well, so for anybody that is tuning in, we are not doing this in the van because it is a horrible Brooklyn uh, summer. It, it's like 90 degrees outside. I, I, could, I could not be in that van. Yeah. Even if you tried to get me into it, I think I would have felt it for a second and be like, nope, we're doing it somewhere <laughs> yeah, else. Fuck, fuck this shit. <laughs> I mean, well, so, and for anyone that listened to the last one, uh, the subway was oppressively loud, so... Yeah. I tried to tell him, for the record. I was yeah. like, I don't think it's going to be gonna as work. fun and ambient as you yeah. think. Uh, I, I think I think actually that that's probably the one of the better performing podcasts overall. So I oh, think yeah. there are enough people that were into it. It's the train. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, but I, I don't I don't know if it was a very pleasant listen. And I, I think for round two, if we have the option to make it better, I think it's a better experience. Overall. We're here in studios about the yeah. slightly cooler. Yeah, slightly yeah. cooler than outside. Um, well, I, I guess uh, the way I start these things all the time, I, I kind of have a catchphrase at this point. It's the point of this is not to talk about how to become a better artist or how to uh, get a job or any of that stuff it's it's more about the why of doing it you know oh yeah sure um from what i can tell you spent a lot of your time thinking about the why of doing art or why of doing anything a lot about the existential esoteric side of all this stuff um and uh yeah i I guess i want to talk more about that kind of stuff Yeah. Yeah. yeah i'm all in yeah. I think we talked about some pretty far out stuff. Yeah, that, yeah. on our God first conversation. Yeah, yeah. Um, it might, might might be a question of like, what new existential territory is there to cover? Well, I, I guess I guess uh, something that you've been involved in as well a little bit has been AI. You oh, know, um, I, n- I never would have guessed that you'd yeah. ask me about that. No, never. Well, I, I think. Well, I, I think. I. I uh, oh, what the heck? What the. Okay, uh, I'll, I'll constantly check this when it stops recording. I'm no also problem. recording on here as well. So, um, But yeah, I, I think for a lot of young artists, it's, it's especially scary and existentially threatening because why would you ever want to do art in the first place if a robot can do it 10 times better, better than you yeah. instantly, right? Um, and I think uh, I, I, there's the side of it that is all about the le- legality of it and the future of art and... The ethics of that but i also think there's a side where you know the reasons to doing art are becoming less and less apparent because of the you know financial rewards or the uh yeah i, I guess the existential survival reasons you know? absolutely um do you have any do you have any thoughts on that or anything or yeah I, I, the question would be when should i stop my thoughts probably yeah. <laughs> um in in general there, to me, it really feels like there's those two big parts of the AI question. There's the, the practical and legal yeah. question, which, depending on who you ask, some people, people who I would be opposed to, might say that the, the part that I'm saying is the legal question. They're like, there's no question. What are yeah. you talking about? But um, from my perspective, yeah, there's a legal question there. There's copyright questions there. Um and then there's the other part, the the part that I don't quite know how to to categorize, the philosophical yeah. part, or maybe just the the artistry yeah. part, the part that is concerned with more the emotional aspects, the meaning aspects of being an artist and making art, and the interactions there are uh, very complicated. 
But yeah, in general, I want to say that the, the concerns that students might have that you described, I, I feel them. Like, I think they're all totally valid. I, I see a lot of discussion around the AI stuff right now online. When I'm talking about discussion, I'm talking about online. The conversation changes a lot when you're having it in person as it goes. Yeah. Um, that is really dismissive. You know, if, if students bring up a concern about it, there is a real totally inappropriate like scoffing dismissive hand waving kind of like oh you need to adapt or you need to think about it differently or don't you know that this is how it's always happened and um i think that that's totally inappropriate and i don't i don't understand how people who claim to be you know custodians of the art spirit and art teachers uh feel comfortable just dismissing people like that and yeah, I just want to send out there to all the students out there that, yeah, your concerns are completely valid. And yeah. something something has to be done. Or whether that be a legal thing that needs to be done or a culture shift that needs to be done, something yeah. has to happen there by my estimations. Well, I, I think there is that comparison to photography to like realistic portraiture or something and it is that like oh AI is just the new photography, and I think it is a lot bigger than that. You know, it is. Um, yeah. It is. It is all encompassing to the point where I, I saw a thing recently where uh, the I don't know which company, but they were claiming that uh, any actor, any background actor, would show up for a day. They would capture their likeness, and they would have it for use until the end of time to use legally. Yeah. So they were saying, we will pay for your likeness once and we own it forever. Yeah. Um, Ridiculous. Which is totally insane. Yeah. Right? It's just completely yeah. anti-humanist. Yeah. It's just removing the the opportunity for people to receive remuneration for yeah. things that are theirs, their labor, their time, their likeness, whatever. Yeah. It's just... Their identity. Right? Yeah. 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 The, the things that we would consider to be sometimes the most intimate part of right. ourselves, of course, companies are going to look for some way they can just rapaciously scoop these things up for a couple hundred bucks yeah, at right. a clip because they've got you at a bad time in your life or something like that. It's, or or it, you just don't know. You just, you're not aware quite of what they're asking. You yeah. know? And I think the AI stuff is exactly that. Like, there is that, like the cat is out of the bag in a lot of ways, right? It's, it's difficult to look forward into a future where this stuff is not... Uh, involved in everything you know yeah. it's it's difficult but I, I think it's important it's important for us to admit that nobody really knows what's going to happen yeah right I mean yeah we to some extent yes this is out in the world we're all grappling with it but I do believe it's big enough and different enough that we can't just be sure about what's going to happen in yeah. any way like to go back to the photography analogy, I really don't like that analogy because this does, people would say like, oh, they, everybody thinks every technology shift is this completely new thing. And uh, that appeal to history is very cute and all, but sometimes things are actually different. Yeah. Sometimes things actually do have a different methodology. Um, and I, I think that this is not like photography because when photography arose, no one needed to take a camera into an oil painting gallery yeah. and take pictures of the paintings in order to make the cameras better, right? They were parallel and independent technologies. And yeah, did it hurt oil painters? Sure, right? And things moved and shifted, but they were still independent. This technology as it is, is not independent yeah. it's it's different in the sense that it completely relies on us and our work yeah. to exist right and some people will just you know you could say that as much as you want and they'll refuse to have their intuitions changed but as far as i'm concerned that is different yeah. that is fundamentally different and that requires a different mindset to approach it correctly yeah yeah absolutely and i, I think uh be able to make those stakes in the sand and be able to acknowledge that something is worth fighting for and trying to defend, I think is a kind of a weird thing to try to do as an artist. I mean, well, not weird, but it's, you know, the impulse for a lot of people is just to, just to sit inside and draw, you know? Yeah. And in a lot of ways, just I think artists for since the beginning of time in the commercial sense have always been taken advantage of, but now it's especially bad because 
their work can be easily replicated or generated in some way, you know? Yeah. Um, and I, I guess I'm, I'm looking forward into the future of like, you know, what is the utility for someone who wants to be a professional artist of, of learning the fundamentals, you know, mm. like what does something like art education look like when, um, again, AI, I, I, I'm familiar with how it works. I'm just not, I'm not super, uh, uh, I guess educated or informed on it, but, um, you know, in 20 years is the act of somebody wanting to draw with pencil and paper going to be something that people do, you know? The, so it's totally possible that in 20 years, whatever we say, the, if it's being looked at through the commercial lens, if nothing changes here, right? Yeah. If we can't resist, if we can't get proper protections, right? If just everything goes dystopian bad and just yeah. the laws say, yeah, companies can take anything. They can do whatever they want with everybody's stuff, which to me seems very unlikely because it seems yeah. like such a crazy position to hold. Um, but if it did go that way, and we look at it through the commercial lens, it's totally possible that no, no one will use a pencil yeah. for any commercial right. purpose. It just, the incentives won't be there. It won't align with a pipeline. It'll just be completely incongruous to the time expectations yeah. of delivering something. That's just absolutely a possibility. Does that mean no one will use a pencil to draw? That no one will use the fundamentals? No, I don't think so. I do think there there's obviously other reasons to do it for commercial yeah. than to do it for commercial purposes. People have always been doing it right. for reasons other than commercial purposes. But the commercial stuff is a big factor in, in how people yeah. think about art and skills and virtuosity and yeah. why you would pursue something like... As much as there has always been a part of art that is just art for art, art or doing art for spiritual or emotional reasons, and I have to say that me personally, I feel like I'm more with the spiritual emotional side of why yeah. of why. Yeah. But as much as that has always been there, and as much as it has always been important, that has always been tied at least a little bit with the the financial yeah. side, because, because people. For as long as people have been able to do it, people have been dreaming of making their living off of it, of yeah. being able to make it their whole life, right. of being able to do it all right. of the time. And, you know, I mean, if, if you live in a, a capitalist society that's anything like ours, then you know the importance of what you can project into the future with something yeah. on how you do it, right? right? I mean, in, at least as an American, right? It's everything. Yeah. That's everything. That's deeply ingrained in our culture. It's like you you're good at hockey. Your parents are going to you yeah. might be a yeah. professional hockey player like yeah. you can make millions of dollars like you're good at rock climbing. Well, you know, it's rare, but people get sponsored, you know. Yeah. There's pro rock climbers and things like good at surfing, good yeah. at math, good at science. Yeah, good at art, you yeah. know. And and art happened to be in this position where it might have been the one that people knew the least about, right? It had the least exposure, right? Like a lot of people's parents, you're good at basketball. They're like, you could, well, you know, you could be a professional basketball player or something. And with b basketball has a lot of exposure, not yeah. the case with art, right? right? And we're in a position now where a lot of us, like when I told my parents I wanted to be an artist, they didn't have any frame of reference. So I had to slide in front of them, like, here's Ryan Church, here's yeah. Craig Mullins. Like, if I work really hard, I could be this. It's like, I had to show them what the what the future in yeah. art was, what the possibilities were. Yeah. And I wonder with the AI stuff, like, would I have been able to do it if I didn't have Ryan Church and Craig Mullins to well, slide I, across the table? I think the answer is no for a lot of people. I mean, for me, again, if I was an art student getting into art now and I saw AI, like if I was 18, 19 years old or something and I was deciding to do it at art school, the act of drawing seems a little bit like, oh, you know, robots already do it better. The yeah. commercial side, the working for Blizzard or Magic the Gathering or working on a Marvel movie, you know, that stuff seems a little bit more out of reach when the only thing standing between companies using AI and not is legality, you know? Yeah. Um, and I, I think I think it goes back to, like, a, a higher existential reason of, like, is pursuing an art form with the uh, idea of fame and money or having some sort of, like, ex external approval a reasonable 
reason to pursue art? And I think absolutely yes. I think that's integral to being a human. You know, we're looking for the approval of other people. And on a larger scale, the whole idea of art is a communication method. You know, it's like you using graphite, uh, doing long graphite drawings as part of the art of doing it when it would be easier on digital or something, you know, or ZBrush yeah. or whatever. Um, but doing like flesh monsters in graphite is like pretty fucking sick. You know, it's yeah. cooler to do that the way you do it to a lot of people than to just like have a 3D model or something or have like a, yeah. you know, auto gen version of that, you know? Yeah. Well, I, I think different, different things appeal to, to different people there. Um, how do you feel about these leaf blowers? Oh, it's fine. You're yeah, okay yeah. with them? Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, I mean, the the way anybody does their art, it's like there's going to be some people who would prefer 3D models over my yeah. pencil drawings, right? Like, there, it's not, it's not like there's any objective, like this media is superior to this media, superior to this media, superior to this media. The, the medias are, you know sort of morally neutral morally is the wrong word there but it's just like i think we can all acknowledge that even in the discussions we're having around ai there's just like this weird hierarchy already where it's like if you did it traditional it's like that's clearly better or something right but that's all just culturally conditioned you know that's not real that's something we're making up that's a story that we're telling each other it's built around assumptions of grittiness and difficulty and for the love of god it's built around the assumption that just because something's traditional you know how it was made right and if an artist shows you all the projectors and the tracing that they did you'd be like wait a second you know like yeah yeah, so it's it's all it's all conditioned it's all cultural oops that's spam don't worry about that um it's all culturally conditioned right right? and i think that this the cultural conditioning is very very important there and i worry about what on mass ai will do to the conditioning around art well i'm curious about what you think of the idea because i I talked to some ai people and their whole thing is that the thing that they're trying to strive for is utopia you know where everyone no one has to have a job, universal basic income, all that kind of stuff, which I think is a very dangerous path to walk down. Same. Um, but do, do you have any uh, thoughts on that at all? or Like the, I, the pursuit of utopia? I would beg those people to go to therapy. Yeah. <laughs> I, I don't know what else to say. I yeah. the, the arrogance to think that you, probably a young man, for the record, should be an arbiter yeah. of what will be utopia, what values should be instantiated there, yeah. what's good for everybody is I mean the la- I mean the is astounding. Yeah. Like just what are you talking about? I, I, I don't know I, I don't know what has happened to them in their life or what has not happened to them yeah. in their life that they would hold that position without any concern. Yeah. And I and of course you know I don't I don't know how vigorously they actually hold it right you know right. if you they might that might just be something they say and then if you sort of hold their feet to the fire they'd be like oh you know not really not right. like that but um yeah I just think it's as far as motivations go it's one of the stupidest you could have it just yeah. strikes me as ridiculous and 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 it's it's predicated on a you, you really hold that worldview but it seems to be predicated on the assumption that right and what i like to spend my time doing it happens yep. to be right. the utopia thing it's like oh isn't that that's convenient very, very, very that's convenient, very yeah. convenient that the thing you do happens yep. to be the gateway to that yeah well i don't I, like it I, I guess i guess for me it, it it relies on two things it relies on if ai can actually solve every single job which i don't think it can never be the case you hmm. know i think that's a little bit too arrogant to assume and I, right. I, I, I i guess that's the only thing but like if ai can actually like if there is a future in 20 years where ai replaces garbage men and artists and musicians and truck drivers and all these things it's like i i think that that's the ideal that they're going for you know if it actually does all those things which i think is a very very uh like a very very tall ask like like yeah. an, like an impossible ask you know yeah. Um, and, and and it 
well, even if they think they can do that, it's like they don't talk about the second step. It's like, all right, we're going to un we're going to undo all the jobs, and yeah. then hopefully we also control the government yeah. and can activate UBI. They right. they seem to be operating from a position that if they sort of put our whole society in a full yeah. Nelson, then the government will be forced yeah, to right. enact UBI. And um, again, I'm just like. Are we looking at the same government? Like yeah. I don't, yeah. I don't trust you right. to force my government yeah. to give me UBI. Right. I, there, there's many points of failure there, and I just don't. It seems there's way more ways that could go wrong, and then that could go right. And uh, UBI is a universal basic income, yeah. right? Yeah. Well, and I, I think it's uh, like I, I think the AI thing, the thing that you guys are kind of fighting for, and the government is, is it, it extends way beyond art, you know, like yeah. existentially it, it extends to, um, you know, kind of like what happens when all these jobs are replaced and, you know, there's suddenly, at least in the art industry, like hundreds of thousands, if not millions of people that are out of it, out of an income and can't pay their rent. Yeah. And I think historically, like looking at the way it's worked in the past is that people are fundamentally corrupt and it, the shifting of power and all that kind of stuff on that scale doesn't go smoothly ever really you know um, yeah but yeah I, I don't know I, I think thinking about all this stuff it's strange because it does seem like the cat is out of the bag with oh yeah do you sorry. need to restart no that? no so it it has a 30 minute record time but it's connected to OBS so it, it just oh I see it, yeah gotcha um but yeah but like, like existentially um like there is the beginner that is thinking about their position or the, yeah, their position as an artist, getting into all the stuff. But I guess professionals as well. It's it's like a, uh, and like an industry disrupting sort of thing. Mm-hmm. You know? um, yeah, I don't know where to go from here. But. Well, no, no one does. <laughs> um, I, I do want to comment on the the industry thing. It's like, well, first off, things in in the overall culture with AI moved on from art. Fast, yeah. right? right? Like art, art, art hit first, yeah. right? With um, the text to image models, like yeah. summerish of last year, so that'll be twenty twenty two. But it, then in November of that year, ChatGPT came out, and m- m- people's concern is much more focused on ChatGPT, video yeah. deepfakes, things like that, rather right. than art. Yeah, you know, art was an early part of the discussion, definitely. A, a precursor to a lot of what was going to come but yeah, yeah pe- people's concerns are are spreading out into everything the concerns are much more about identity now yeah. right artists were concerned about identity it was sort of packaged in there because we're so our names and our lives are so intimately linked to right. our art a lot of us right not all of us but a lot of us so the identity concern was kind of built in to the art concern but not in a way that I think that the mass populace got, right? right? But they get that much more with things like deep fakes and, and all of the concerns around just being able to generate convincing videos and sound files of anyone saying anything. Yeah. That is a much more graspable concern yeah. because it's just relevant to absolutely everybody right. and the stakes are much higher yeah. there. But um, yeah, what happens with that? is going to affect art. What happens yeah. with art is going to affect that. We're all just kind of waiting to see what's going to get either regulated first or what's going to have a court decision first. Yeah. You know, there's already some court cases percolating, but um, it's very likely that most of those cases are going to have long lives yeah. of long court cases, possibly yeah. appeals, you know, yeah. probably appeals. So. Um, it's like we're all waiting to see what's going to hit first. Right. You know? Well, and, and it seems like both sides, no one really knows what's going to happen. You know, it seems so up in the air and kind of, uh, yeah, it, it seems like esoteric and the uh, views about art or AI as a whole, there, there is no, yeah, I guess, yeah, that's it. There is no uh, consensus on what's going to happen. Yeah. Just be cautious out there, anybody who's listening. Be cautious of anybody who claims they have, you know, that it's obvious what the right thing is or yeah. anything like that. It's like, it's not. There's a lot of 
people striving for like narrative control yeah. and things like that. Um, a- the AI side out the gate was very strong on narrative control, just starting from a yeah. position that we know what we did is fine. Right. What are you talking about? And it's just like classic tactic, yeah. see right through it. Um, of course, everybody wants the thing that's making them millions and billions of dollars to yeah, be yeah. fine. Yeah, of course, it's, it's totally fine. Okay, yeah. yeah, there's no, you know, it couldn't yeah. possibly be illegal. Yeah. And it's just, we've all got to see through that and we've got to really focus on trying to build, in, trying to build a world that we actually want yeah. to live in right. and being willing to change the things that it would take to wind up in the world and not wind up following, for examples, for example, uh, the letter of the law into yeah. a boring future that nobody wants right. just because a narrow interpretation of these words in this clause means this. Right. It's like, that's, what did we do if we let that happen? What no. world are we living in if we let that happen? What, wh- how does that bode for our whole future if we're all just going to dumbly follow little interpretations like that? It's right. very small-minded. It's very weak of us as a culture, as a society, as a species. Yeah. It's like, there's got to be a better way for us to have conversations and be definitive about what we want and just say, well, nobody wants that. We're not going to do that. Yeah. You know, laws are made to serve us, so we're going right. to turn things around and fix things. We, we can't wind up solemnly marching into a boring future. I won't accept that. Yeah, yeah. Well, I, I, guess, I guess, you know, on, on a smaller scale as well, like for the individual artist, I think that, um, like somebody that might be existentially threatened by working at a studio or having their work replicated and can't take freelance work anymore, I think there is a little bit of an opportunity to go and move towards being more of an independent person in general. Um, yeah. Uh, it's it that's an op it is an opportunity yeah i agree with you but something worries me about like i like the idea well forget like the idea i really believe this is true that art practices can be anything right they're like very art is very structureless and there's no real objectivity in art in my opinion and the that allows practices to just be wildly different from each other and things can morph and flex and you can wind up with an art practice career life that you're just like, the fuck is this? How did I wind up in this? This is totally surprising. And I want the studio life for the people who want that, for who that's what aligns with their temperament. Yeah, It kills me to think that that's just off the table, off of... And it'd be one thing if that was off the table just because of an emergent independent technology or a market shift, right? right? Just like one day everyone decided like, you know, we don't like things made by companies. I don't know what would condition that. But it would be one thing if that was what caused that, if, if what wiped an entire useful, enjoyable field of art practices from existence was one of those independent emergent things it's another thing if what's going to wipe that out is the exploitation of the work that those people did anyway that's crazy that's just completely crazy by my accounts yeah i i want that option to be there for people not everybody should have to be an entrepreneur artist who's just like completely independent and has to hustle and all of this like that's not for everybody. It's for some people, right? I can stomach it to some extent, but right. it will only limit the amount of art we see in the world if the person who their temperament totally does not align with that yeah. sees no options that align with her temperament right. in the world, yeah. right? There's some artists who would only create art that will move us, change us, matter to us because they see if they practice, they can do it in isolation, they can get a studio job and they can have a nice life in the studio, stability, calm, they don't have to be this attention grabber on the internet. Yeah. They can just, that, that all maps for me. Yeah. And that same person who right now, we get to enjoy their art, either the art that they would put out there on the side or the way that they beautify big projects for something like Disney or Marvel or something like that. It breaks my heart to think that that person if that's not on the table, they'll never go through the arc. Yeah. They'll just be like, well, I'm, no, I'm not going to be some loud person on YouTube to 
be right. to have an art career because I'm not that person, right? right? Like, so that will close the door to yeah. that art practice. And right. I, I just wish it wouldn't go that way. I, I, I wish it wouldn't either. And I, I think, again, it's, it's kind of a strange thing cause, to observe because I know that companies are developing their own algorithms and their own data sets and all that kind of stuff. And I think that moving forward, you know, we were talking about it a little bit earlier, but the like tragic nature of life and the dis- disruptive nature of being a person is that sometimes yeah. things happen that are completely out of your control that disrupt your entire mode of existence, you know? Yeah. And I think that like if somebody is spent their entire life trying to be that studio artist and now that whole future is a little bit disrupted. I don't necessarily don't necessarily it's the end of the line, you know. Mm-hmm. Um, I think I mean I'm fundamentally a pretty optimistic person, and I think Same. that like it, life will find a way, you know. It's like the studio whole thing might not exist in the way it does right now, but you know I think that the act of being a creator and drawing and you know creating beautiful pieces of artwork will always have a place, you know. Um, I think that the scale of being able to operate where you're making millions of dollars it gets harder and harder in some ways, but the sustainability of it, I think like being like a path where you don't have to be the content creator, educator, YouTuber guy. Um, I think that will always exist in some form or fashion, you know? I hope Um, so. Uh, I, 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 I might be naive in saying that it will be around, but no, I, no, I don't think that's naive because like we were saying earlier, like, no one knows for sure. Yeah. No one knows for sure. So yeah. I don't think it's naive. I don't think it's naive. I don't think we're all going to... Frozen? Oh, no. So it keeps uh, disconnecting. But, I'm yeah, it'll be fine. Could it... Am I too close with my phone? Is it giving vibrations? Maybe. Frequencies? Shit. <laughs> I'm, I'm pretty dumb, so... <laughs> don't know. Yeah. This is charged enough. I'll get it away just in case. Um... um or maybe just the USB needs to be. I, I, I think my stuff is slowly wearing apart from from the whole van thing, but from just intense humidity. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, I mean, I, I, I'm a, I'm on my own arc right now, where I'm like trying to find my own path, and I'm not, you know, I'm not making a ton of money or anything, and I'm like having faith in some future. And I think the, just by the nature of being a creative person in general, it does like there are the lows where everything yeah. seems a little bit hopeless in some ways you know um it's scary yeah Being a creative person is is scary yeah yeah our, our society has not built many guardrails yeah. for that any i right. guess it's a scary thing yeah yeah it, it 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 puts you in a difficult societal niche yeah. and weirdly our society has developed a sort of adversarial relationship with people who want to be creative yeah. where it's like once you choose that or own that for yourself mm-hmm. there's a big part of society that's like okay right well let's see it motherfucker like they're just like they'll just right. want to put you out to see and be like they want to kind of like poke at you whenever you fail and things like this it's just mm-hmm. like well I, I guess i guess to me it was kind of strange to see how quickly artists were kind of thrown to the side once their thing was automated. Like yeah. Going on TikTok and seeing people doing like, you know, their prompt engineers or prompt engineers or whatever. Yeah. And they're like, oh, you know, it's as difficult as painting it from scratch or something. And it's like, no, it's not. This is way easier. And then the uh, comparison of like, oh, yeah, well, you know, we don't pay attention to hor- like stagecoach drivers anymore and all that kind of stuff. And <laughs> like, like how quickly people just kind of... Uh, throw away the taste and uh, I guess skill of somebody who had worked for it for 20 years who had enjoyed all their work and now it's all automated so it's like okay now they're not nearly as important as they used to be you know yeah. um, and I, I think I think that's just like the result of like existing in a, in a market where uh, like things are constantly changing and people's attention spans are very short and uh, people are relatively entitled to people's efforts and attention and all that kind of stuff and yeah I, I don't think i got that until yeah. this ai thing came up yeah that all caught me really off guard yeah i was very surprised yeah by all that how, how like cruel people can be with i guess other people's work and i yeah. i should have predicted it because like you know 
what is it, schadenfreude, like the, just the pleasure of watching other people be miserable and things yeah, like yeah. that. Like that yeah. runs deep yeah. in our society. So, um, yeah, I guess I should have been able to predict it, but I have to admit I did not. I was caught very off guard by how gleefully people sort of dived into the idea of like, fuck artists, like, yeah, yeah. you know, we got them, you know, they can't do, you know, we really, we've got this thing that replaces them. Ha, ah, they were fools to think they could be artists anyway. It's yeah. like, I, I mean, it's kind of like a, it's better to rule in hell than to serve in heaven or something yeah. sort of thing. You yeah. Know? It's like a, I appreciate the paradise lost quote. Oh yeah. It always absolutely. pleases me. Yeah. 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 hundred percent. It, it's, it's very uh, counterproductive. Yeah. It's like, I, I don't know in the big picture, why would you think that's a good way to react? Yeah. It's like, do to everybody who is taking that tack and sort of gleefully roiling in it, it's like, so you fully expect to never feel ownership over a creative endeavor right. of yours. And you think that if you were to do that, that right. the the rightful inheritance of your efforts should be shame and mockery. Yeah. Like the same for you? Really? Like yeah. that that's what you expect for your hard work and things like that? Yeah. It just it seems very counterproductive. It's it's also it's it just creates this chilling atmosphere around creativity in general because it's just what do you what are you telling your children, the rest of the world, by that's how you treat people who yeah. have risk things and followed their hearts and yeah. tried to be creative and in in and let's and let's remind everyone in a field that five years ago everybody thought would be unautomatable yeah right so yeah. it's not like they did it completely stupidly it was right. a risk right and everyone understands the risk of being a creative and an artist but they got sideswiped by something basically utterly unpredictable except for like five people at google in 2014 yeah so your reaction to that is to try to shame them onto the ends of the earth and laugh at them as they lose their livelihood. What, right. what, how do you not expect that to hurt the whole atmosphere of innovation and creativity that you ostensibly love when you're holding up, you know, the tech on some weird pedestal? It's like yeah. completely counterproductive or boros dragging eating its own tail. It's just I don't see how that contributes anything good to the world. Yeah, I mean, it does feel very much like Cain and Abel, just killing an ideal for it being the sake that it, it's something that you're you might be insecure that you didn't follow that ideal or something. So you're like, oh fuck that, I'm not gonna even think about it, you know. But I, I again, I guess moving forward, like I think the like the ideal situation is something where like AI already exists. It's hard to put it back, you know. It it's where it's something that supports and helps artists as a whole, you know. I don't. I have no idea what that looks like, but neither do I. You know, I, I thought I did early like, on. Yeah, I thought I knew what what an ethical version would look like early on. As I've learned more, I, I don't know. Yeah, I'm with you. It's it's hard to tell. As it, it's hard to imagine. You can imagine them, but then when you try to imagine the support systems necessary yeah. to make them possible. Uh, and because we don't understand the tech completely, I mean, everybody, right? You know, these are black boxes. We haven't solved the interpretability problem with them, things like that. It's very hard to get serious about how you create the systems that would allow an ethical version to thrive. Yeah. You know, it's hard. It's hard to imagine. Yeah. It's tricky. Yeah. Um, well, and I, I, again, I, I think it's like a, for a lot of people, they might feel like they're looking over a cliff or something, you know? Mm -hmm. um, and it's either a nice bed of pillows and cushions at the bottom or lava, you know? And it's yeah. A, uh, I think, like, the thing to do as a creative person right now, it's not to just keep creating and not just keep drawing. There is something... Like, I mean, you're obviously trying to defend it in court, and you're being very outspoken about, you know, what you, what you feel about AI. Sure, in, in my capacity, yeah. Yeah, and I don't know, I, I think people can do small things to either prepare for the future or combat whatever is happening right now you know yeah. um but yeah I, I i again i don't know what it looks like for the the scary part about about all this to me is for a long time the future of you know go to art school get a job all that stuff was a path that everyone could follow but it seems to me that those paths are disappearing faster and faster yes. you know there's way more of new things that have to be created in the future for 
art as a career to be sustainable. You know? Yeah. Yeah, we, we were already on a slippery slope with uh, with art school. Yeah. You know, the the art school system was, I would, I would say, by my estimations, the art school system was failing more people than it was helping. Yeah. Um, most people who you meet who went to art school are deeply dissatisfied yeah. with their school experience. Um, and for a surprisingly, like, technical and limited job like entertainment design sort of broadly construed like being a concept artist Mm -hmm. and things like that um when you're in it it can feel very big it's not big it's a very niche industry and it's a surprisingly technical and niche job yeah so it's it's interesting that it has as much energy around it as it does and I think that the reason for that is is because it's one of those holdouts in a sea of chaos, right? Mm-hmm. Like to want to be an artist, to just want to draw and find some way to make that your life, right? Um, is It's a swirling maelstrom of nothing. No good advice, no guidance, no promises, no assurances, no guardrails. It's really difficult. Yeah. And that job has this branding i'm gonna say but that's not the right word of like security of yeah. like oh well if you could just draw well enough and get good at a b c d um you could be a concept artist and then that's just a real job yeah. you know salary have a good life you know Health work, work stuff, on projects yeah. yeah all those things um i think that did a lot of work for the energy around that sector of the industry and it's almost inevitable that tons of people will gravitate towards it because it just has those that allure, those promises that the rest of the sector yeah. doesn't for people who want to make art. Um, but it was still underneath all of that. It has always been the case. It's still art. Yeah. It's still being an artist. Right. And so it was still actually always hard, always risky, and always um, precarious. Yeah. You know, we just tried to kind of bend yeah, away to, from that and and, and and try to i guess uh uh yeah make the path a little bit clearer with college and degrees and all that yeah. kind of stuff but the idea of being a concept artist is a pretty new thing like in the past you know 50 years or something yeah. you know? I mean, i'd say even 50 years ago i mean no one was calling it that i don't think and yeah. it was like the 90s i guess so it, like 30 years ago even yeah i would say that that was probably from my knowledge of entertainment design history I'd say, there, there was people who did other things like vfx before the 90s there was people who did other things like makeup yeah vfx that wound up being concept artists because right. someone needed to design yeah. stuff right so it's almost like a job you accidentally 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 and then yeah probably 90s ish you got the first people who like that was their speciality and again usually it was from they had done these other things you know they were prop maker on a show doing makeup making maquettes things like that yeah. and they found that they had this quite applicable skill of like just doing the initial concept yeah. and then they specialized in it and then that slowly transformed into it just being its own thing yeah. but um yeah it's very very new yeah. and still we're talking about oh there's schools that'll help you do it it's like there's like 20 right like there's like a few schools that will offer you right. a entertainment design degree or a concept art degree or a game art degree or something right. like that and, and something like game art gets pretty it's got a lot of other stuff in it than concept yeah. design but um so it's been it's very it's very narrow yeah it's it's very narrow um and uh, I don't know, as I'm in that industry, that was my big goal, you know, when I was a young, yeah. young guy. Um, so I love, I love my industry. I love that industry. You know, I really I have a lot of energy for it. And I yeah. certainly did when I was younger. And my, my heart aches for my industry, yeah. you know, if, if things were to go very poorly. Yeah. And um, it's always disappointing to think that you might have like been in the golden era of something and you didn't even know it. Yeah, I, you know? I, I, I feel like it. Yeah, I feel like it's always the case. You know, the golden era, the golden age is always happening, and then afterwards you're like, oh yeah, 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 like Line Decker's age or something, right? Rockwell, you know, all yeah. that stuff. But I mean, um, in, in terms of like the actual actionable items for 
somebody that's moving forward with this stuff. I mean, I, I know that you're, you're, you're not, you're never going to stop drawing, I suspect. No. Um, for somebody that is, that doesn't have an income, doesn't have that solid future or even a resume to fall back on in any way, what do you think is the correct set of things to do? You know, somebody who's like a beginner artist or something. Yeah. Well, first off, I'm just a guy on the internet, so don't, oh, yeah. <laughs> definitely yeah. don't, I'm surprised often by, sometimes I'll get emails that are like, you said this one thing on stream yeah. six months ago, and I reoriented my whole life around it, yeah. and thanks, you know, yeah. and I like those emails, like anybody would, but I'll be honest, every time I get one of those emails, it kind of scares me, because I'm like, who's the person who reoriented their life six months ago and did not have a thank you email to write? Right. Like it went horribly wrong yeah. for them. So I do worry about stuff like that. And I just want to heavily disclaimer with that. And that, that is part of being an artist. Yeah. You, for ev like I said, everything that we've done to brand certain parts of the industry, concept art is like, ooh, straight path, yeah. objective, right? A, B, C, D. That's not real. Yeah. Art, if you want to pull off being an artist, being an artist, being an you artist. need to be independently minded, right? Even if you don't want to be an entrepreneur, even if you don't want to be a, your own artist known for their style or something like that, even if you just want to be a studio person, that does still require some significant amount of independent mindedness because you need to do the work up front, usually independently, to get good enough to get that job. And often a studio will hire you because there's something special about you, something independent about you. So first things first, I'd work on the mind, right? I know that sounds very weird, but yeah. so much of art creativity is a mind game. Right. Usually when I'm training students, um, workshops, one-on-one, -on -one, maybe a quarter of the time might be spent on technical stuff, like yeah. foundations, things like that way more of the time is spent on the mind, yeah. is training the mind. And not because I'm forcing it to that, it, just because I'm open to it. And then the, that's most of the questions right. students have. They don't know how to focus. They don't know how to pick their schedule. They don't know how to structure their lives. They don't know what they should be concentrating on. They, worst of all, they don't know what they want, yeah. right? Which is, that's a, a hard one, right? And that that's just a, a core journey thing. But the mind is where I would start. Because the with the AI stuff and all that, the skills, the ground skills, who knows, yeah. right? I can't sit here and pretend to know what skills someone would want to pay you for yeah. in five years. I don't know, right? Let's not forget that the AI people also don't know yeah. what someone, they might want to say, well, someone's going to pay you for prompt engineering in five years. Right. Yeah, fucking right. Like yeah. Auto, auto <laughs> GPT crazy. will be doing all the prompting yeah. very soon. Soon. So, soon. No. Know. What, um, all good. So I don't know what someone would want to pay you for in five years, but the mind game is probably, is probably much the same for a lot of things. Yeah. Should we check on that? That's uh, lately. Hmm. So. All right. Um, but yeah, well, I, I feel like it goes on a broader level to existential like faith in something, you know, where the idea of being an artist in general, like even if you want to be a concept artist, there are things that happen along the way that put you in a path that you never would have expected to be yes. in the first place. Even if you like if you wanted to be a Disney artist and you end up working on like Doom or something, doing yeah. super gory art. I'm, that happens all the time. You know, and I think that a bunch of the stuff, to me, AI is just another thing that is noise when there's already a ton of noise to begin with, which is your death, you know, the existential, <laughs> like, oh, you're going to die one day. So being yeah. an artist is stupid because you should be a lawyer, you know, or you should be, yeah. you know, there might be a nuclear bomb that goes off one day or you might die of COVID or, yeah. you know, and AI is just another small existential threat in the face of a billion other different things that are very, very loud for the reasons not to be a, an artist or painter to begin yeah. with. And I think for me, like, the answer is not to, you know, just blindly draw and study and like study fundamentals. It's to like keep drawing, but like keep your eye out for what it, whatever is happening in the future. You know, yeah. like concept art is a new thing. And those people might have really wanted to be illustrators, but they landed on concept art in the 90s because that was the new job, you mm -hmm. know. And now concept art is the path, but um, 
you know, I, I suspect that the thing that we are talking about, we have no idea. It, it, it would like blow our minds to know what it, whatever it's, it's going to be. You know? Sure. Yeah. Um, and having some amount of faith in the process and being able to, yeah, work on your mind and remove yourself from the outcome. I think it's the only way to, like, beyond AI to become a successful, like, a successful artist. You know. Yeah, I mean, to to uh, to sort of address the the existential stuff. It's like they're just to say it outright. Like, no one should quit. I mean, the, yeah. the, these are serious concerns, everything that we're talking about, but the urge to be creative is, I believe, so important that almost, there is almost no justification to yeah. not do it. Yeah. Um, it's a different kind of thing than practical concerns about incentives and money yeah. and what you can get out of it. It gets tied up with those things very quickly. But for a lot of people, for a lot of people, if you're not creative, you'll go crazy. Yeah. It will ruin your life. And I think that's the... <laughs> Bless you, sir. Thanks. Sorry. Bless you. You sneezed so hard that the camera closed it. Shut it. Oh, man. <laughs> that, that, is, that is good timing, actually. <laughs> yeah. That's funny. Yeah. Um, there... That... To me, that's the real existential dread, yeah. right? Like, the when people say that phrase, they're often attributing it right now to industries dying yeah. and things like this. And that's a real concern because when an industry dies, people's families get destabilized, incomes disappear, incomes that they would use to... people. A lot of people like to scoff at that. They're like, what? Careers get destabilized all the time. Fuck you. Yeah. An income being destabilized is the income someone would use to pay for medical... Yeah. problems so it's not insignificant yeah. when somebody's job disappears and just figuring right? it out takes a lot of energy and time yes. you know let's say it's telling somebody to figure it out that that's like years of work to switch industries oh it's know? i i i want everybody who takes that tone i just i want to first i want to shake them yeah and then i want to say you know come to mama tell me you hurt you Let's figure out what happened in your life that you are completely incapable of empathizing with the suffering of human beings. I don't understand how, yeah. how'd you miss it, yeah. you know? So the real exit, so that, that existential threat is real, but there's this other existential threat that just people who want to be creative, if you don't do it, it will harm, I'm going to say soul, right? That's the wrong word, but yeah. it will, you'll get neurotic. You'll get depressed. You won't treat people right. You won't have a good foundation to take care of yourself yeah. and take care of your head. You, people go on these wild detours in life where they wanted to be a creative person. They're like, I can't do it. So then they'll mm, they'll muster all of this adrenaline and all of this vigor, and they'll go off and become anything yeah. else. And 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 quality of that five to ten year detour that they go on it will be it will be charged by this aversion to what they see as like a childish or petulant dream yeah. right and then inevitably they all grow out of that they lose the adrenaline they lose the vigor they're yeah. like shit well now i did it now i'm whatever the other thing is yeah. and i'm like why did i abandon art again then they come they have to come back to it they're like where'd all these lost years go it produces all of this psychic suffering to deny your yeah. creativity. If you if you have honest conversations with artists, you find this all the time. It yeah. hurts their life. So there's always that held up against, can I have a job? Can I make money off of it? Will people understand it? Yeah. That concern to me dwarfs all those other concerns. Yeah. It's yeah. like, if you're a creative person, yeah, even if you go off and get the other job, dude, a true, a really deeply creative person, even with the other job, with the stable life, they're fooling themselves. Yeah. They're still going to come back to art. It's still never going to be enough until they're actually right. doing their creativity. And a lot of them, will, they'll dump the secure job. Yeah. They, they'll need to live it for a few years just to see 
right. what it is, you know, to have the autobiographical detail, and then they'll dump it. They'll be like, yeah. fuck it, it's better to be an artist. You know, yeah, I'm just like, 100%. I'm going crazy. You know, I'm shutting down by not being creative. So that to me is always a reminder, is a reminder for myself and to say to other people, it's just like, just not a good reason to quit. Yeah, the, absolutely. the world has not presented yet, even AI is not a good reason to quit being yeah. a creative person. You've got yeah. to push. You've yeah. got to push. I, I mean, yeah, if AI is the reason you quit, then you're just not paying attention, I think. Because, again, there is the, uh, I guess, exis- there is that like existential threat of losing your job, but then there is the like limited time that you do have on the planet yeah. where you are going to eventually die and you don't you don't have much time to do anything else other than other than things you really love doing. And yeah. Talking to the people that I've talked to, I've met people who are billionaires who are depressed, who are like, why am I doing this? Why did I do this? Like, I'm in charge of all this stuff. I'm at the peak of society and it doesn't matter to me, you know? Shit. Yeah. And I think that the only thing that really matters most is your own subjective opinion of what what actually matters and what actually brings you joy because I don't think we really do get a lot of things to care about, you know? Like, um, I couldn't force you to go work on a cruise ship and be a comedian or something or to be a mechanic or any of that stuff because that's just not your path and who you are, you know? Yeah. And uh, the fact that, you know, you can go and... Like, I I talk about this a lot. I I probably mentioned in the last podcast we have together, but people go to an art school in the same way somebody would go to Mecca or something or in the same way somebody would... uh, yeah, like go to Jerusalem or any holy site. They travel all around the world. They go spend tens of thousands of dollars on education or a yeah. plane ticket to Mecca and, you know, spending five or six thousand dollars per class at Art Center or whatever. You know, I, I think it's the same part of the brain working. Like you're working towards an ideal and having faith in something better than, than yourself, you know. Yeah, I mean art art produces a lot of really strong experiences yeah. in people and if yeah if you don't have a, a another if you don't have like a religion or something like that or some other spiritual practice that is um instantiating yeah. peak experiences like spiritual experiences um yeah i think for a lot of people art is the peak you yeah. know you're seeing visuals are very visuals are very evocative you know they can pull intense things out of you if you make art there can be a lot of very strong experiences in the process of making mm-hmm. art that really you can't get anywhere else. And and then, yeah, you're, you know, your art heroes quickly become your saints, you know. And oh, yeah, every 100%. time you sit down to draw, you're like, I'm praying to Jamie Jones, let's yeah, yeah. do it, you know. Like, I'm trying Sergeant, to, yeah. Yeah, you're just, you're like aligning yourselves with these, the things that affect you the most. And that, yeah. it, can, it the analogs are very direct, I yeah. would say. Yeah, that, that all tracks for me. Yeah. Well, I, I, again, I, uh, it's almost 12.30 um, so we should wrap up sort of soon. But... Yeah, we don't have to rush. We're okay, okay, to... yeah. We're okay. Go, go for a bit longer. Um, but yeah, I, I think, uh, you know, the AI, again, the AI is just one of a long list of things on the reasons not to be an artist. And um, the advice I got from somebody once is the more externally that you look, the harder it is to be creative because you're looking for what other people are expecting from you yes. instead of what you should be doing yourself. Yes. And, um, I think it is extremely difficult to find that balance because you need to exist in a world where you are making an income and communicating with other people. It's but so hard. That entunement with yourself and your own personal taste, I think is, that is truly what I think makes a great artist rather than anything else, you know? Yeah, um, I, I would definitely advise everyone try to try to connect with that. I yeah. mean, people's people's external the money external validation you know feeling important by whatever avenue you find you know god help you followers subscribers yeah. something like that all that stuff is fickle and insubstantial yeah. like it's it can be when you're young and you don't you feel like you don't have a place in society or something like that yeah it can be almost impossible to make somebody believe that, right? Yeah. And to them, I get it. Like, you just have to go on your arc, right? You have to find... Um, um, I, I well, forget what I was saying. I forget too. Well, I was going <laughs> to say, uh, I remember last time we both said, preface, 
I think I'm an idiot. And uh-huh. the only thing we're saying is, is like we're pontificating on nonsense we know, we know nothing yeah. about. I'm definitely an idiot. Yeah. I, like pseudo intellectual. Yeah. And like, I think that everyone should take everything anyone else says with a grain of salt. Yes. You know? I meet people all the time who tell me I'm an idiot because I didn't go to college. You know, I don't have a degree. People say that to you? Uh, like, well, not, not, <laughs> not in so many words, but people are like, oh, so when are you going to go to college? You know? Hmm. Oh, so when are you going to get a real job? All that kind of stuff, hmm. you know? And it's more like an expectation of like, oh, I'm just kind of figuring myself out or I'm like educating myself or something. But the idea that I found what I want to do for the rest of my life and if it directly contradicts somebody else's version of what they think I should be doing with my life, then people are going to be, they're going to say stuff, you know? Right. Um, but, you know, in the same way that concept art, that path of security doesn't actually exist. I think it's the same thing for like a real estate broker or something oh, yeah. or somebody who works at a bank. Like it has existed for a certain amount of time, but it is so weird and random that there is any sense of security in that thing Yeah. at all that to expect security in the future in anything, I think is a little bit like, um, like take again, I remember when the crypto people were all saying, oh, this is going to be the next biggest thing until it wasn't. You yeah, know? Um, I agree with you. Yeah, I, I think, I mean, the security in so many sectors is really just a recruitment branding, Yeah, you know, right. if, from where I'm standing. Yeah, yeah. Um, and I, I think that the dream of going, of being a concept artist at Lucasfilm has sold a lot of uh, scholarship or a lot of uh, tuitions to Art Center or Alcat or something. Oh, sure. Know? Um, yeah, but yeah, uh, but yeah, to to over like I, I'm an idiot, and you should only listen to me if you feel like it resonates with you a little bit. Yeah, I, I've, I've there's that I saw someone put it as subjectivity is implied, just yeah. like that as a general statement yeah. everywhere. It's um, yeah, that, like I said before, I'm just some guy on the internet. Especially yeah. if you want to be an artist, you've got to be able to think for yourself. Yeah, and decide what's true. Yeah, what's the right way for you. Um, you can't, you can't reliably just copy what other people have done yeah. in art. You know, you, if you want your art to stand out, if you want to be able to find a little niche yeah. for yourself in the art world, it's by definition, almost you're going to have to find some aspect that is just, that's not how other people did it. Yeah. You know? Well, and I, I think it's again, finding that balance because that advice is like telling you to be your own own thing figure out your own path but inevitably you're going to have to give up some of what you'd be doing no matter what because you're creating art for other people for money you mm-hmm. know so you are creating stuff for other people so it's you know you're having to kind of compromise to a degree and be okay with that you know yeah. um and i meet people all the time who have started businesses recently that i'm like wow that's impressive like you can make a living off doing like drawing anime boys that's fucking sick you know and that capacity to go and figure out a path to making more money drawing anime boys or furry porn or whatever, you know, is more existentially secure than any degree I think would, or like it, uh, safe. It's more existentially safe for me than like getting a, a really badass resume and a degree and all that kind of stuff. You know, if you like drawing furry porn. Oh yeah. Yeah. I, I, some, yeah. some people get backed into that corner. Yeah. Like, oh yeah. I hate this. Yeah. How'd I wind yeah. up doing this? Yeah. That's yeah, 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 <laughs> true. But there's somebody that their, their entire purpose in life was to draw furry porn. Right. Yeah. And, uh, you know, they, they wouldn't be happy doing anything else. And indeed. Uh, and it would be wrong to feed their work into an AI to take all of their commissions. It would be for the yeah. record. Yeah. But, uh, again, I think, the optimistic side of me is there's going to be a, another outlet of creativity that does enable that job. Hopefully, I guess. I, I think people just, whatever's going to happen on the outside, you're going to be best equipped to either deal with it or be emotionally insulated yeah. from it if you know what you really want to do yeah. on the inside and you are doing the things that you like and you are deprogramming basically the habitual overreactions to yeah. what everyone and everything in the world is sort of asking yeah. from you. Um, I mean, uh, I can only speak from experience on a lot of these things, but it's just like, <laughs> well, 
where I'm at now in my life, right? I I don't feel day to day stressed for money. Yeah. Right. Which is not something a lot of artists can say, yeah. unfortunately. Right? right. But um after years of doing this and you know, just building up clients, building up different sources of income and all of this, I just I have to keep working, right? Yeah. I have to keep working for it, but I don't have the 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 money rumination is not really a part of my day to day thinking yeah. anymore, right? That's a degree of freedom. Yeah. That's like, all right, you're not worried about money in that capacity. And I also don't have a day job, yeah. right? So my time is unstructured, right? Yeah. It's like a, I can kind of do whatever I want. And part of that is, you know, running my business and things yeah. like this. Um, with that freedom, what do I wind up doing? I'm still drawing the stuff that I was always drawing, yeah. right? I'm still drawing the stuff that I was doing in my sketchbook as a kid, as a student, things like that. The the freedom, it's like, what am I doing with my freedom lately? I'm working on a big fantasy project with my friends. Yeah. That that's it. It's that's what it's, you'd be doing anyways. That's right? what I'd be doing anyway. It's something I could have done without training, without yeah. a career, without without all of these other things that I've accrued. And it's something that a lot of people out there could do right now yeah. with their friend. Right. They probably have a friend who they, they've already done this right. or they would keep doing it and all of this. It's like if you're not just doing if you're not just begging for approval from the world, basically, in all of these various avenues, um, probably what you want to do with art, you could do it today. Oh, yeah. 100%. You could do it right the hell now. Yeah. So find what that is for you is what I would say to people and actually start doing it. Yeah. You know, don't put it off forever don't get lost in um in skill hell yeah. you know thinking like oh well i can't do this fun thing with my friends uh because i've got to be better until i can start that right, right? it's like there's nothing good yeah. over there that's not going to pan out the way that you think yeah. it is do it do the fun thing do yeah. make the projects that you've dreamed of making make the pictures that you've always dreamed of making do them the way that you want to yeah. do them, even if right now, because you need money, you need security, you have another job, you need to do it in a more limited capacity. Like you can only do it for an hour or night or two hours on Saturday morning, right? Yeah. Even if it's that, in that two hours Saturday morning, do what you would do if yeah. you would do, just, if you had money, if you had freedom, yeah. all you would do is open the gates on that right. and you would do it all week, right? Yeah. But just find that thing. Yeah. Find that thing. Well, you know, I would say, like, don't ask for permission either, you know. Yeah. And I, I think it's a lot harder said than done, but I think the, like, again, the thing that you're doing now is the same thing you're even doing, like, 15, 20 years ago yeah. or something, you know, just drawing monsters and thinking yeah. of cool, cool ideas and stuff. And, yeah. Um, and That's I mean, my favorite thing in the world. Well, so I'm going to do it for money or for not, you know? I, well, I feel like a couple of things to that. It's like, you know, once you figure out the money thing, there's still other like things that cause anxiety it's not like any mm. anxiety completely disappears from your life once you have resources no and then two it's like you know um the most valuable resource you have is your attention and your time you know like for me i i feel like this podcast i started it while working at proco and i felt like i had some amount of permission to do it because i was working for this big youtube channel and had a lot of people you know like I was doing other things on top of it. And now that I'm doing it now kind of more independently, it's become a little bit harder for me to justify doing it, hmm. you know? And I think That's it's interesting. A, well, and I, I think it's like, I, I really love doing it, but just the, the time investment is a little bit too much sometimes. So I'm trying to go out of my way to do it because it is like, I love it. I love having hmm. esoteric conversations with a really wide variety of people, you know? Yeah. It's the thing I'd be doing even, even if I had a trillion billion dollars or something, yes. you know? And trying to, like, be true to myself that, like, you know, and, like, another aspect of that is, like, I'm, I don't consider myself, like, um, a very, like, like, uh, like a draftsman with a lot of attention on me. I have a relatively small following, all this stuff. So it is, like, there's a degree of me wanting to get permission by becoming a better artist or, like, better artist. Right. Uh, because that would allow me to... Uh, be more justified in saying the things that I'm saying. Right. right. 
But if I waited that long to become a, like a great draftsman or something in the way that I perceive a great draftsman to be, then I might wait 10 or 15 years before finally doing the thing I'm doing now. Yeah. You know? That is, um, I can basically promise you yeah. that would happen. Yeah. I mean, I, 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 I'm lucky enough to have a lot of friends who I consider great yeah. draftsmen. And the universal experience across everybody, the board everybody, yeah. is that they put it off and they get whatever whatever anyone might be hoping for, this level of skill or something like that. And none of them, once they've hit that level, are like, now I'm going to start no, the thing. And I'm yeah. so glad I waited. Right. No, all of them. Yeah. They hit that level. And the universal experience is they realize it wasn't about that. And then they look back at the years that they didn't do the thing they wanted to be doing. And they're like, I fucking wasted my time. Yeah. What the hell was I doing? Right. It is across the board. They wish they had started it five years ago. Yeah. They wish they had. It could be anything, but to bring it to brass tacks, it's like you want to be a comic book. You want to make a comic book. Everybody who waits, well, I got it. I need. I can. I oh, the arrogance. I yeah. can project eight years out. I'll be good yeah. enough to do the comic book the way yeah. that I want. It's like even if you hit the level. It's never on time. It'll be 12 years out. Yeah. Then they look back and they're like, I should have started my fucking comic 12 years ago. What yeah. did I think? No one cares how good I am at drawing fingernails. Like yeah. not a person right. cares. I should have been making the thing, right? Yeah. That is the universal experience. So it, yeah. it's, it, it can be hard to believe when you're starting out, but definitely yeah. just get into it. Do it, it badly, right? Well, and yeah. I, I think uh, I, 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 I really resonate with the art spirit and uh Robert on Reed's writing. It's like, there are two two quotes. It's like he went to an art school for ten years and he saw students doing exercises really well. He left for ten years and saw the same students doing the same exercises but a little bit better. Yeah. You know? And then I forgot the second one, so never mind. But <laughs> but you know, I think that act of waiting for permission, waiting to be good enough, all that kind of stuff. Like if you're a beginner draftsman, looking at and you want to be a comic artist, looking at Jim Lee or Mike Mignola or any of the extremely famous comic artists, you're looking at the Michael Jordans of yeah. of that industry, you know? Even if you train for 50 years, you might not get to that level where yep. you're, you know, like it's only a few guys get to do that. Yeah. It's a hard pill to swallow, but yeah. one that you should swallow. Yeah. Yeah. Well, and I know that, you know, George Lucas wanted Star Wars to be Flash Gordon, you know? He, st- he only made Star Wars because he couldn't get a Flash Gordon license, you know? And Star Wars has eclipsed Flash Gordon multiple multiple times over, yeah. you know. Fascinating. Yeah, and it's like the act of, uh, I guess, copying other people, trying to do things badly, all that kind of stuff. Often, I think, leads to someone's own personal fulfillment, and in a lot of ways, ironically, like creative financial success. Way more often than the waiting for permission and stuff. Yeah. And that, no one's going to give you permission. Yeah. No yeah. one's going to... Who could give it to you? Well, and, you know, there's no card to hand out. There's no certificate to yeah. give. The, the degrees that schools give out are not... They're not... They're not permission. Yeah. Right? There's no one to give it. Well, I, I feel like I feel like for a lot of uh, places that are more rigorous, I think... I, I don't think they're doing this necessarily intentionally, but I think the impulse telling people to stay for 10 years for ateliers or something yeah. is actually a test <laughs> like oh, you, you have to say no because it's like a zen koan or yeah, something. exactly like you know like uh you're good enough once you think you're good enough and yeah. once you start training and doing all that stuff then you're going down a different path you know and it's a totally fine path to go down but it's um you are definitely sacrificing something by, by doing that yeah the the there's, it's a difficult because we as artists, we love art, yeah. you know, and we, because we love art in a, in a very complete way, right? We love looking at it. We're like fans, but yeah. we also make it, right? We see the skill part yeah. differently than everybody else does. Yeah. The public doesn't see the skill part the way that we do. Yeah. And artists can, they, they have more refined, like, an artist can tell the difference between some of their favorite artists, you know, who's been doing it for 15 years and who's been doing it for 55 years. Yeah. Where if you showed the public, it's the same yeah. to them. They're like, they're incredible. I don't know right. what else to say. Like yeah. just, but we were like, ah, yes, you know, we can make all of these minute nuances about, right. and it's just, that's just for us. Yeah. 
but we don't know how to extricate our love from that yeah. from the other things that we want to do, right. like actually making the products. So yeah. it's very important for everyone to eventually grapple with that yeah. and accept that the the our love for virtuosity yeah. is it's infinite and there's no on that scale of how far things could go there's yeah. simply no stopping yeah. it could go forever and it is orthogonal to the actual practical concerns of how do you make your comic how do you make your comic book things like that right. we've we've we have to remember when we're thinking about that stuff we have to remember who we are as fans yeah. because all of us have fa as fans have loved things that we could say something else is better, yeah. right? Like, and we, we just, we put blinders on for that. We like to forget that. We don't just like the comic that we know has the best art. Yeah. We like a lot of comics, yeah. even though we know their art's not as good. And there's comics that we like more than the one that has the best yeah. art. And there's comics that we like more with worse writing than the one that yeah. we know has the best yeah. writing, right? So when we set our, our, our product goals, our project goals, I think we we have to lay to rest the virtuosity obsessed yeah. artist side of us and remember more our fan side yeah. that knows that there's a variety of things out there and yeah. that it's not just about this really not true apples to apples yeah. comparison that we can manifest. It's you just need to connect with people and that can happen on all sorts of skill levels. Well, and, and, and when, when you say people, it's not a lot of people either. For a product, for a real project to be successful, even something on the Disney scale, it doesn't, I mean, you need to hit 1% of the population. Oh, dude. And that, that, that is the best selling book of the year. Or yes. Like, you know, movie of the year if you get 1% of the population. Yeah. I mean, most, most creatives starting out, um, they would not believe just because they haven't heard or done the research. It's mm -hmm. like, like if you look up like, um, top selling graphic novels yeah. for a year the the numbers are astronomically low yeah I'm, it's nothing right it's, it's like a f couple tens of thousands of yeah. copies is enough yeah. to make you like number five in yeah. the world right. it's like you're really not selling that much yeah. in these smaller niche things right if you if you weed out the big dogs like marvel or dc obviously yeah. that are sort of controlling that yeah. sector like new stuff and independently published stuff the numbers are not as big as you would think yeah. to be a success and then right. get optioned or something like that. For screenwriters, it's like, dude, the the numbers are so small. Like the number of new screenplays that get optioned a year is like every year it's like less than 20. Yeah. It's like it's it's there's the numbers are so much smaller than we tend to conflate success with yeah. in our uneducated minds yeah. before we've done the research. Even if, dude, even on the New York Times bestseller list, yeah. right? What's at the top of the New York Times bestseller, especially for fiction. Um, if you look up, it's just, when you see it on the list, it's just one through 10, right? Yeah. Or one through 20 or whatever it is. If you actually look up the numbers for the copies that are sold, yeah. you'll be like, wait a second. You can be a New York Times bestseller if you sell 50,000 copies yeah. of a paperback. Right. That's, in your head, you were probably thinking it has to be millions, yeah. right? But it doesn't. It's, yeah. it's, millions is for harry potter right well, and, and, and then the manufactured level of that where people will hire a company to mass buy their books in order to get them on the yeah. new york times bestseller but it, like it's all arbitrary you know yeah in the same way that like the forbes 30 under 30 is all a marketing scheme or something and, <laughs> i or, believe that i haven't looked into that one you, you can pay personally to be on the forbes 30 under 30 you know that's awesome. which is totally it's ridiculous, you know. Well, well, it's yeah. like, well, if I had enough money to pay for it, I must be yeah, uh, yeah, eligible. Yeah, you know? yeah, yeah. It's like buying a Ferrari or something, or you know, whatever. But like the, uh, I remember reading Sargent's biography and or, or something about John Singer Sargent, and it was like two thirds of his patrons did not like his paintings. You know, <laughs> it, it's like an abs like the the most successful portrait <laughs> painter of all time. Pretty much, right? That's awesome. Two thirds of people don't like his paintings. That's you all know? you need to know about being a commercial artist. Well, it's like it, it's all there in that statistic. Like to, you know, to be to have like a successful business. If you sold something for a couple hundred dollars and you hit a thousand people, that's quite a bit of money. You know, yeah. that's like that's two hundred thousand dollars. You know, yeah. that's two hundred people, you know, or however many people it is. But it's like you're thing you know you look at these people that you really admire and you see the idol of it and you see the 
the peak and all that kind of stuff. But the reality of it is it's not nearly as glamorous as people might think it is, yeah. you know? Um, and to become a successful, and it's part of the reason why I think AI is like one small potential thing is that uh, there's always opportunity for your really niche thing to be a business in, in some yes. small way, you know? It just takes that like, like weird not asking permission. It's part of the reason why I really admire Tommy Wiseau because it's so ridiculous that he did it in his way it's so tr- it's so real it's so, it's so real it's so but so i really real. i really love the room because it's like like that thing has probably made him millions of dollars at this point dude it is hard to have more fun watching a movie than, <laughs> yeah, right, right, I mean, absolutely yeah. you can try to knock it yeah. every which way but when you yeah. watch that movie or if you put it in front of people you won't have more fun watching a Marvel movie. Yeah. I mean, you will, it's... And it costs hundreds of times more. Dude, right? it's just, it's, is it yeah. fun? It's, is it yeah. interesting at all? I mean, that movie is, you couldn't fake it. Yeah. You couldn't fake it. It's incredible. Yeah, and, and I think that that approach to things of like, you know, something like The Room, obviously, for somebody that wants to be a blockbuster director taken very seriously, I'm sure that's, you know, world ending, horrible thing to happen. But from just somebody who's a filmmaker, you know, having like, I could not replicate that level of success if I tried. We have to be very clear. The room is some people's dream. Yeah. Some people, if they woke up in Tommy Wiseau's life, their prayers would have been answered. 100%. This is everything I dreamed. This is the specific alley of artistry that I just wished I could own. I just love that I've brought people this much laughter and joy and Right. just mysti- mystification and things yeah. like that like yeah it would yeah probably christopher nolan would be like what the fuck happened oh, oh my but, God. yeah for right. so many other people <laughs> oh my, yeah. could, could you imagine if oppenheimer was like as bad as the room and it's like well at this point <laughs> that'd be amazing <laughs> yeah at the, at the, i mean it, again it would suck for him but it would be people would write books about it forever Absolutely. if christopher nolan turned it, it to tommy was well, and it might have like a longer life too uh, uh, yeah but not yeah it's possible um, well, it, it, I think it's like that's like the cruel nature of, or not cruel, it's just the nature of being a person is that things are so unexpected and weird that, yes. you know, and, it, it, and on a more large scale, like we think, like we treat Star Wars or Riot Games or any of these things as the biggest things on the planet, but like I, I think something like a third or like half of the planet doesn't have internet or something. Yeah. And it's like we think the internet is, that's it, that's all everything. But yeah. Half the planet doesn't even have it, you know? It's like, w- what a weird thing that we yeah. put on this crazy pedestal, but it's not even that important. No, you know? it's not. Yeah. No. So. I mean, we, we, we put it on a pedestal because we like it, Yeah. you know? But it's just not, no, it's right. not a big deal. Yeah. It's really not a big deal. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. Not in that way. Right. Right? Um, yeah, yeah. It's just not that serious. It's not that big of a deal. And. Um, I think being able to look at yourself and be like, oh, I shouldn't take myself that seriously, you know, like AI sucks. So this stuff is a little bit existentially threatening, but, you know, it's not that big of a deal. You know, you can figure it out in some like, well, again, it, 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 it is a big deal, but it's also like you shouldn't kill yourself over yeah. it or anything. No, you know? no, definitely not. I mean, <clears throat> yeah, the, there, there's a lot of there is a tendency in art amongst artists to take things very heavily yeah and that will that will pay dividends in every kind of monstrous way yeah. right that is how you wind up possibly wanting to give up everything because yeah. of ai or something like that it's like no you don't you you can you can identify it as a problem you can push back yeah and it can just be that yeah. right you don't have to carry it's weird that we can carry art so heavily. It's understandable because we really connect with it, yeah. right? But yeah, the angst, the suffering. I mean, so, most people's artistic journey is characterized by suffering, yeah. which when you pull back on it is crazy. Yeah. It's dust on paper, pixels on screens, you're drawing goblins, right? Yeah. Like it's not, it shouldn't be shouldn't be so steeped in angst and suffering but that's what our society conditions these days unfortunately there is a way to pull back 
Absolutely. And be more relaxed about it. Yeah. Well, again, speaking from experience, like talking to some of the people that have had that level of success, like beyond the YouTube success, like being, you know, CEOs of giant companies, it doesn't, it doesn't matter to them. You know, they're like, it, it's like cool that they get to, you know, have a lot of money and a lot of recognition, but sorry, my nose is... You're right. Okay, I'm good. You um, want tissue? No, I'm good. It, it, it's, it's stuck back there, you know. But uh, yeah, yeah, it, it's like it's, uh, they get the thing, but then they're like, oh man, I'm still anxious. You know, I still yeah. have to exercise. I still have to eat well. You know, I still have to, you know, draw the things I really love drawing or create the things I really love creating. And yeah. no matter how much success they have, there's still that, you know, basis of I'm going to be drawing cool gargoyle gargoyle guys or something, yeah. you know. And, I mean, I I launched into the AI stuff basically right away, yeah. and it was you know in the initial navigating it, it was rocky, yeah. right? Like when I put out my YouTube video against it, and yeah, the, you know, sort of mm, got a lot of views. Yeah, the wave of attention and meeting people and talking to people and giving some talks and things like that. Uh, yeah, it was rocky initially as any change is or just yeah. new unexpected thing but yeah it's like obviously i'm i'm probably one of the most concerned people right or else yeah. i wouldn't have done all that stuff but these are some of my happiest days yeah. you know it's not ruining my life right you know i'm i'm there's a i am pushing back right and i care a lot but i'm do chipper fine. chipper yeah. day to day like yeah. i don't it doesn't it's just a thing to do it's yeah. an important thing to do but i draw happily i really enjoy my life day yeah. to day you know i'm very grateful for all of the things that i have and it's not stopping me from doing any yeah. of the things that i want to do so um again i'm clearly one of the most con i would put myself up there as like i'm one of the most concerned people yeah. or else why would i be going to washington to push back and things yeah. like that so if it's if I can do my life happily yeah. with that stuff going on, I yeah. think anybody can, right? Yeah, like you're good. Absolutely. Like if you need permission, here's Steven's permission yeah. to still be happy yeah. and still be free and relaxed and do your stuff yeah. and continue as you were, yeah. you know, while you think about this stuff right. in well, these and, sides. And you're all like, also speaking from experience, you're also equally as anxious about the future as everybody else. Sure. You know? It's like, it's still, you know, scary and it's still all that stuff but it's still worth doing what you're doing and drawing and all that kind of stuff and no one and again anyone who claims to know the future of how things are going to play out they're probably wrong and you probably shouldn't listen to them yep but, yeah yeah no one can know no one can know except me you know yeah i know i i, know I, I know. just am refusing to I, i'm actually the embodiment of ai yeah um yeah. i i am mid-journey Yes. Uh, turn into a person yeah i know so we've had many discussions about this yeah. with the I, microphones off i yeah. mean I'm, I'm here to kill you yeah. So, yeah, I know. Yeah. It's, it was a shocking revelation when you laid that on me. Yeah. But, um, you know, I thought it was important to get one more podcast out before my death. Well, uh, there's no way, there's no way for anyone watching this to prove that this isn't AI generated. This whole thing. That's right. Yeah. At the at the current state. Yeah. There's no fancy metadata we could put in to prove the uh, provenance of yeah. these video files. So 100%. no. For now, yeah, this could be AI generated. Uh, no, no, it, it, it is AI generated. That's right. Yeah. yeah, I was just, it was statistically probable that I would say this could be AI yeah, generated exactly. when in reality, yes, the objective truth is that this is yeah. AI generated. And uh, yeah, hopefully our uh, statistical predictions of what word should come next have been convincing for yeah. the past hour and a half or so. Yeah. Um, hopefully we haven't hallucinated any facts that would give away the game. And uh, hopefully the video side of this multimodal AI has done a good job at keeping our faces consistent instead of glitching sideways at random moments or having weird shimmering at the edges of contrast. Yeah. Well, uh, I, I feel like the, the next thing AI would do is ask you, ask uh, how to follow you online or if somebody wants to learn from you, how to, how to do that. Yeah, follow the real Steven um at uh my youtube channel you can just type in steven zapata yeah. that's s-t-e-v yeah e-n the ph stevens are on the wrong side of history yeah uh, my last name is zapata z-a-p-a-t-a -A -A. um i think my youtube i mean you'll link it down in the description yeah. but yeah. i think my youtube address is actually uh at steven zapata art that's my youtube channel 
Um, I have Instagram, also Stevens Up Out the Art. You go follow there. I haven't been posting a lot, I have to admit. Yeah. I'm really, these days, I'm mostly just on YouTube. Yeah. You know, the nature of the internet right now uh, has made everything else a little, I'm just yeah. like losing interest in posting everywhere else. That makes sense. Yeah. Yeah. Cool. Well, uh, thank you. Sick. Thank you, Christian. Thank you, homie. It's been a pleasure. Yeah, I will cut it there.